Hey everybody and welcome to DirectX 11 tutorial 29. In this tutorial it's going to be another demo like we did a couple tutorials ago. So I'm going to go ahead and open this and you might see it looks kind of similar to what we had before. We still have the option to move our object around with these uh, different matrices. However, we have another window now, and this is for our camera. So I'm going to move our actual camera around, and remember you can do this with W, A, S, D, and Z in spacebar. And, and let's just have a quick review of what we are looking at today. So our, for our object, you know, we have these matrices, and we can apply any combination of these to get our object, uh, to get the coordinates in world space, right? And what the final matrix we get, this is called our uh, model to world matrix. And this just gets our model into uh, world space coordinates. We will also have a view matrix and a projection matrix. And the purpose of the view matrix is to get the model onto where it would be uh, in the camera's viewing frustum. So what is a frustum? Well, if we check draw camera viewing frustum, you will see that we have this big, uh, it's like a pyramid with the top cut off. And this is what the camera can see. It can see all the objects that are inside of this. Now the view frustum will uh, move all the objects into this that should be, or the view matrix rather. So just to demonstrate this, let's say that our object, let's rotate it towards where the camera will be, and let's move it down the negative x axis. And for our camera, let's move it to be in the center. And also, if you notice, okay, the camera was back here. When we move the camera, we're not actually moving the camera. You see, the camera, if you pay attention, it doesn't ever move. It's staying at the same spot. What's happening is everything else moves around the camera. So we're positioning the camera at the center of the world, and really we're just moving everything else around it. And for the look at position, currently we're looking down the positive Z axis. We want to look down the negative X axis to be able to look at this object. So I would change the X to negative 1. Now it's changed. Right now it's between, uh, you know, the, this vector where it's looking down the positive z and negative x, so it's down the middle. I'll take out the positive z component, and now we are looking at that object. So what it's done is it's moved the object into the camera's viewing frustum, which if I enable that again, you'll see it here. For the viewing frustum, we have a few values like the near z and far z which controls uh, how close or how far of the objects you can see. So, for example, let's see, uh, the object is just behind where we can see, so if we look through the virtual camera, we won't see our object. However, if we just move it a little bit further, now, uh, yeah, the object is inside of the frustum, so if we look through the virtual camera, we can see it now. So the viewing matrix is actually getting the object into the viewing frustum. So what is the projection matrix for? Well, the projection matrix, when the object's in this frustum, it's still in a 3D space that we can't really use. So we need to get it in the 2D screen coordinates to draw it, because we're drawing it on a flat screen. So even though the image, you know, it's, it's, like, uh, it's like a 3D world, but we're really drawing it on a flat surface. So what this projection matrix does is it will actually take everything, you know, inside of this frustum uh, and it will get the screen coordinates for it so that we can actually draw it on the screen. So hopefully that makes sense. I'll have obviously, of course, you can download this in the description and play around with it. Let's uh, look at some other things with this. I'm going to reset everything. So first, let's look at the near Z. So... I'm going to move this object closer and closer, and now it's too close to be rendered. So if we look through the virtual camera lens, we will not see that object. 
Now we can adjust the near Z. You can see this. So now the object is inside of the frustum. And when we look through it, we can see the object. And the same applies with the far Z. We can uh, move it way closer. And yeah, we'd already seen that actually, but let's just look at it again. So we see the object, we move it back a little bit, and now we don't see it because it is past our viewing frustum. Now we have this, these other things for our, our viewing frustum, which are for our view matrix, where we can control the eye position, the look at position, and the up vector. So let's say we want to look at this from a higher uh, point of view. Well, we can just increase the eye position. And now we are looking, uh, you know, from above. And we can increase our far Z and take a look. And you see now we're looking at it from the top. Now we also have this field of view value, which will, it kind of looks like you're zooming out, but you're actually not. So pay attention uh, to, I guess, the bottom more so. You see, these grids, you know, this right here is the same length as this right here. And you see how much more stretched it is because our field of view is so wide. If we look outside of the virtual camera lens, we haven't zoomed out at all. We've just stretched our frustum extremely far. So with a very large field of view, you get some very strange uh, results. A couple other things I want to note before ending this tutorial is your look at uh, vector and your up vector, or rather the forward vector from your look at and your up vector cannot be parallel. So let's demonstrate what I mean by that. For our look at vector, I'm going to take off the viewing frustum. For our look at vector, we are looking down the positive z axis, and for our up vector, it is currently the y axis. So we could we could do something like, okay, let's say we want to make our x axis the uh, up vector. Well, that's no problem. We can do that. However, Let's say that we want to make our z-axis, which also happens to be our forward vector, where we are looking, our up vector. Well, we can't do that. And if we try to do that, we will get some very strange results. So just keep in mind that your forward vector from the camera, where it is going to be looking, and your up vector cannot be parallel. Let's change the y-axis to be the up direction again. One other thing I'd like to cover is there are certain combinations for these that will crash the program, so the program should not let you do them. If you try to do them, it should just override it with a different value, so you might have to manually type in certain values if you're finding that it's getting stuck on something. Other than that, though, I would just suggest that you download this and run it and mess around with it just to get a good idea of how it all works. In the next tutorial, we're going to look at setting up a view matrix and setting up a projection matrix and just incorporating that into our solution that we have been working on.